Ryan, welcome to Real Vision. Thanks, Ash. Great to be here. It's great to have you. You know, we were talking a little bit uh, before we got started about uh, our journeys into the crypto space. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I went to computer science school in Canada, and from there, I've done a, a tour at some startups uh, about 10 years ago uh, at Amazon.com. And from there, I went to uh, a wonderful fintech startup in Manhattan where I cut my teeth in uh, in finance. And uh, while I was there, I just uh, my love for crypto, which had been in the back burner for some years, had really uh, uh, flourished. And I just I had to get involved. So I, I've been full time in the space now for for a few years. So tell us a little bit more about the details of how you got involved in the cryptocurrency space. Well, when I was in computer science school, we were in a computer lab late one night and uh, started playing around with the Bitcoin software. And uh, because we were in school and in the thick of the theory, it was immediately obvious to us that it was novel. Yet we didn't buy any. We didn't save our wallets. Uh, it wasn't that time, you know, otherwise uh, I probably I probably have, you know, my my. Jeff Bezos mega yacht behind me instead of instead of where we are today. Uh, but having been bitten with the crypto bug fairly early on, I, I had the advantage of always knowing it wasn't you know a scam and that there was novelty. Uh, and so over the years, as as Bitcoin grew, uh, I, I still wasn't invested in a major way, and we we saw. We saw that more and more stakeholders were getting involved. That these, you know, there was evidence that these open networks uh, might be the future. And then along came this fellow named Vitalik Buterin, and Vitalik had this idea that great, the novelty of Bitcoin is that we can now make a public computer network that is a, a consistent, reliable system, even if up to half the participants are malicious or incompetent. And Vitalik says. Let's glue an app platform to that. Let's make a, an app platform where you can run financial applications, different kinds of applications, and let's put it on the blockchain. And at the time, I was very lucky to, to watch his launch webcast uh, the day of. Mm. And uh, I had an opportunity, uh, which I did not take, to participate in the Ethereum crowd sale. <laughs> uh, so I let the crowd sale sail by. Uh, and for a few years, I uh, watched with great interest as Ethereum began to take shape and early apps were written and mainnet was launched. And it was just so exciting. And uh, eventually, uh, when I was working at a, a fintech in, in Manhattan on uh, uh, consumer, consumer finance, uh, totally traditional, nothing to do with crypto, uh, there was a catalyst and I realized I'm an investor. I can get into this. This is going to change the world. And I took action and I, I heavily invested personally over, over the following years. And, and now I've been, uh, I've been an active community member for several years. And uh, it's just been an absolute joy, Ash, to watch this space come together. And you know, those of us who are closest to it believe that it's going to change the world and provide dignity and open access to financial services for billions of people. So it's just been a real pleasure. You know, Ryan, that's so elegantly said. Sometimes it's hard to get a view of the big picture, uh, but I think that brings it into focus very clearly. Tell us a little bit now uh, about what you're doing as an investor and also as a community member in the Ethereum space. As an investor and, and not a trader, I focus exclusively on concentrated bets over the long term. And in particular, bets where I believe the thesis for both growth as well as defensibility are unambiguous, where I get a certain sense that the unknown unknowns may be of reduced scope or at least manageable. Uh, or there's some sense that there's this evidence that even as this thing gets big, we have confidence that nothing's going to swoop in and take that opportunity, that, you know, that premium uh, from our investment. And as a result, I focus primarily on uh, investing in independent blockchains. Uh, and my most concentrated investment, you know, call it call it over ninety five percent of my crypto portfolio is in Ethereum. And as an independent investor with no LPs or board members or or uh, anyone that I that I owe uh, a consistent narrative to, I can change my mind whenever I want. And and so as a community member, I spend my time 
essentially on public education, as well as avidly reading about all the aspects of the space that may affect the ETH investment thesis. And every morning I wake up and I, I grab my coffee and I say, what's going to derail my crypto portfolio today? <laughs> and I, I bring that open mind and I, I, I read about the, the app layer projects. I read about competing blockchains. I read about the latest Ethereum research. And what's remarkable is that there's basically almost no yellow flags and, and, and a lack of red flags. It just keeps getting better and better. And, and more and more defensible. So uh, it, it's been really cool to watch, watch it grow. And as a community member, uh, I've really pivoted towards public education uh, in, in the form of uh, long form Twitter threads, trying to uh, come up with original ideas, move the space forward. Uh, most recently with our report, ethereumcashflow.com. Uh, which uh, is just a four pager that describes how we believe Ethereum is transitioning from being a confidence based investment opportunity into a cash flow based investment opportunity. So, you know, somebody call Buffett because we think Ethereum is going to be just printing money for, for Ether holders over the next few years. Yeah, that's really interesting. A 90% concentration obviously is a very substantial uh, concentration in one particular asset. So tell us a little bit more about that. We'll get into the report in a few moments. Uh, but when you think about uh, this is something that's a longstanding thesis of yours. You mentioned two characteristics, specifically growth and defensibility. What is it about ETH that gives you the sense that the growth and defensibility is there to such a great degree uh, that you'll concentrate at 90% levels in it? When it comes to Ethereum's growth, what really clicked for me is that the nature of the Ethereum blockchain and the apps you can build on it is truly novel and valuable. And so we had a sense that over the years, as, as long as the supporting elements were in place, we feel confident that that, that growth is going to occur. So what, what is the novelty and what are the supporting elements? The novelty is that Ethereum as a world computer effectively cannot lie. Can you explain that to people who may not be uh, have computer science backgrounds? What does that mean? For sure. When Satoshi Nakamoto invented Bitcoin, they, you know, he, he or they invented a system whereby for the very first time in history, a public network of computers could be trusted even if up to half the participants were malicious or incompetent. Now, Ethereum comes along, you know, founded by Vitalik Buterin, and they had this, Ethereum had this insight that, wow, we can do what Bitcoin did from a reliability standpoint, and we can turn it into a computer. We can turn it into an open access public utility that anyone who pays the fee is able to create their own application or use an existing application, either as an end user or a middleware provider, completely open access world computer. Now, what, what has followed from that is this idea of, of credible neutrality, which, which is this transformative world changing idea that we think folks are gonna be talking a lot about over the next few years. Credible neutrality is the idea that if you're a small country in Europe and you have an agreement with a much larger country, say it's America, and two years into that agreement, America decides that they want to change the rules of that agreement. You, as a small country, have limited recourse. It's an asymmetric relationship with America. Ethereum offers the promise of changing that because the terms of the agreement can be encoded on the Ethereum blockchain, including, for example, financial recourse, where if, if certain conditions aren't met, you gain the ability to claim a payment from the counterparty and any other manner of clever uh, recourses and mitigations. And so credible neutrality is going to usher in a new era of a level playing field of global trade prosperity among nations and mega corporations. It'll be almost like there's an independent nation living on the moon. And we can say, excuse me, independent nation. Can you please be the arbiter in our disagreement? Can you please enforce the rules of our game? 
And Ethereum has the ability to do this and it has the ability to do it at scale. And it turns out that the kinds of force-based recourses, you know, things like I have a bigger military, so I'm going to get my way. It turns out that the Ethereum blockchain doesn't really have a lot of exposure to that. And so this idea of credible neutrality is going to allow uh, the world's mega corporations and governments to come onto Ethereum and do their business on Ethereum in a way that offers an unparalleled level of transparency, level playing field, as well as novel capabilities that are just straight up better than the current financial system. So an example of those two capabilities would be instant settlement, where when we're on Ethereum and we hop over to uh, Uniswap, uh, org and uh, Uniswap is the most famous uh, crypto app today. And it just, it lets you take one token and swap it for the other token. And when I execute that swap and I pay a transaction fee to Ethereum that later this year will begin to accrue to the holders of the Ethereum token, Ether, that's an instant settlement transaction. There's no T plus two there. That's it. It's done right away. And as a consequence of instant settlement and programmatic finance, it, it creates a, a robustness and a, a uh, almost like a lubrication for the whole system to be kind of faster and tighter. A great example of that is that uh, in a recent crypto drawdown where the prices of uh, popular tokens crashed 50% in a day, the whole Ethereum blockchain was humming with liquidations and uh, adjustments and none of the major apps broke. There was no need for a bailout. There was no need to call the Fed and ask them to print money to uh, save us from, from this drawdown. The whole system simply worked. And a lot of us find that deeply appealing. Uh, and we think it's the future of finance. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.